Hello everyone, in this week's lab you'll use your horizon composite samples to measure the ability of your soil to retain water. In soil science this is done what we, using what we call the soil water retention curve, which is the relationship of soil water content as it decreases in response to increasing pressure applied to remove the water. At least that's how we do it experimentally. So remember your horizon composite sample and the first thing we do is to weigh out seven identical samples using these small files. And we need seven of these, you need to weigh them first and record the weight of them all en masse and then we're going to arrange them on a sheet of paper like this. And the easiest way to weigh out seven identical samples is just to pour soil in to overflowing and then we're going to level them off, just like we're baking a cake. With the ingredients, right? A little bit more in this guy here, and so they all get leveled off. So the reason why we do this is that we, the vials have a known volume, so that we can also calculate the density. And once we've got them all leveled off, we weigh them again, record the total weight, and then we can calculate the average weight of soil in each vial, and we know the volume, so that we can calculate the density. Okay. The next thing you'll do will be to wet all of these small samples to saturation. So for each sample, we use a kiln tray, which is a porous ceramic tray, sitting in deionized water, and we place a filter paper on there with a retaining ring which needs to be labelled carefully and you'll need to read the lab manual to know how to label the retaining ring. So at least your name and the pressure that this is going to be equilibrated at to modify the water content. So once we've got a filter paper there and a labelled retaining ring we will just take one of these weighed soil samples and empty it gently into there. Now what will happen is that the capillary action of the small pores in the kiln tray will draw up water so that this will, the soil sample will become saturated. It will take a little while, but don't worry, there are things to do while you wait. For example, you need to measure gravimetrically the starting water content of your soil. It won't be zero and you need to account for that in your calculations. All right. We need to stop there and we'll go upstairs to have a look at the, the pressure. We apply the pressure to the soil samples in these very thick walled steel vessels here. So we, we can apply pressure in here up to about 1500 kilopascals. Above that we have to cheat a little bit and apply pressure chemically. We keep saturated solutions of different salts in a sealed desiccator and that saturated solution is able to absorb water from the atmosphere inside here to create an equivalent pressure up into the megapascal range. So we can get soils quite dry doing this. Now with this lab you'll need to spend some time next week to measure the water content of the soil samples after they reach equilibrium at the various range of pressures that we use. And of course if you're putting wet samples in the oven you need to come back at least a day later to measure the dry weight as well. Now, in terms of safety, there aren't really any serious safety issues for you. We do recommend that you wear lab coats at all times in the lab just because there may be residue on the benches which could do nasty things to your clothes and to keep yourself clean. But the more hazards, potentially hazardous stuff with high pressure gases, we will do for you. Now, I do want to remind you that this video is not a substitute for reading the lab manual. You will need to review the theory and the methods before coming to the practical class. Now, measuring soil water retention is a very useful and important procedure in soil science and I hope you enjoy the lab and measuring it on your samples. See ya.